What's up guys, it's Dragon, we're reviewing an Earth Blast that hopefully is pretty decent this time. So we've been real hit or miss with the, uh, the old Dragon Power line. Now, the aesthetics of them, I've lauded. I think that they're great. I think they look cool. I like the dragon theme. I like that this dude looks like he's riding in on Thundermaw Hellkite with his Ember Strike. Like, I mean, this is a cool blaster. So coming in at 3150, which is a weird MSRP, over at Target, I think it's even a Target exclusive, we have the Ember Strike, which is possibly, I mean, Firebolt was good, right? But it was a little Harry Potter for my taste. I think the Ember Strike is the best name. I think that this has the potential to be the best blaster. So this is a pump action revolver, comes with 16 elite darts and only holds eight. That's assuming there's no secret onboard dart storage, maybe in the stock, who knows? Uh, but overall, ooh, there is secret dart storage explicitly in the stock. How cool is that? So it actually has enough darts to load up the entire blaster once, which given how undesirable and cheap elite darts are in general, it's a wonder that Hasbro has finally started giving us at least enough of them once again. So at 3150, you're getting a pump action revolver. That puts it firmly in pseudo primary category. Could you top it off constantly off of an open field like the SCNC? Yes. Would it be okay for HVC? Maybe if you were wearing a dragon costume, but uh, we're going to review it on its own merits. I think that this one's definitely in that kind of like is it a performance blaster? It probably won't be, but it's just cool enough that almost like, you know, a manta ray or an electric eel wasn't necessarily, manta rays were kind of performance focused, but uh, belay that, like the warthog blaster wasn't a performance powerhouse, but it was a warthog. You could hand it to Timon and it would be, you know, best friends. It was cool. Anyway, uh, let's see if we can how to train this blaster. All right, so opening this up, it's kind of like less exciting as there's no actual channels for the darts, but it'll hold exactly eight. And with eight darts in there, they don't have anywhere to go. So you just kind of have to be a little delicate with how you get them in there, but it is a compliant mechanism. There's sort of a spring detent here that's gonna snap this closed, and hold it securely. I like that the stock isn't just empty dead space. I think that this was a nice like feature. They didn't have to do this, but that's a that's cool. That's a cool onboard dart storage solution. I also, again, I really want to applaud them on this scaled texturing that they've done on the cheek rest here, on the stock plate here. It's on the plastic up here. These fins are, of course, uh, this rubberized sort of material. Although this one is not as rubbery as the other ones uh, in any aspect. This is a much harder rubber. I'm not sure if that's just this batch or if that's this blaster, but it's uh, it's definitely a lot stiffer. Don't anticipate those being safer. So you've only got paint on one side of the blaster, but the good news is that paint is just the Nerf logo. On the other side, you have, you know, opacities for those. They haven't been filled in. And then you have a actually transparent uh, grip here with the uh, the D&D logo, which is of course pretty, pretty cool. Trigger feels decent. Pump action back and forth. The pump grip is a little shallow but it lends itself very nice to the lines of the blaster. And I think that's my favorite part about this whole design is that it just looks really good. It's very clean. The muzzle itself kind of looks like the dragon is sort of opening its mouth to breathe fire out. You have sort of a fanged motif coming in here and coming up here. Uh, the rotation mechanism is pretty clean, pretty cool. Let's fire once. It actually feels like it has a little bit of power. Be interesting to see if you could ever rebarrel this. You'd have to take the entire front end off, obviously, to, to pet G it or something, but. And that's slam fire. So that's really all the features that a Springer like this can have. Other than that, the comfort is decent, certainly much more comfortable than the bow. You would think that this might get in the way, but you would have to have some seriously large hands. I'm well above uh, the, you know, a couple standard deviations above average, and I'm not impacting that with my thumb. So that's pretty, uh, pretty good. The stock pad is comfy. It's definitely a little cramped, you can see from my arm. But again, I have very long arms for a child. This would be an excellent like rifle size blaster for an adult. It's sort of like a compact. I think that it's sweet. I actually, I, I like it more now that I've held it and fired it. Originally, I just liked what it looked like. But between the thoughtful feature for dart storage and the overall like slam fire efficiency as well as the, uh, the design of the blaster, I think that it's definitely cool enough to take outside and put over the chronograph. All right, guys, so we're back out here with the Ember Strike. Let's go ahead and put it over the chronograph, see what's up. 74 is a little above average, eh? 79 is significantly above average. 77 is pretty good. 76, you have to wonder if a 10% bump is across the board. Are they doing it on purpose, you think? 
In slam fire, we get error 60, 77. Significantly less consistent in slam fire mode. But wait, there's more. Go ahead and dump those out. That's actually, you know, it's not the most practical reloads, but it's, it's close, it's close. I also wanna point out, I noticed like a funky motif for more fangs on the blaster. It's almost like Hasbro wanted me to like this one. There's a fang motif over here on the orange plastic on both sides, which is interesting. We can get deco on both sides, just not if it costs money. So I've gone ahead and I've set our, uh, our zip target out at about 30 feet. And we'll see how the old dragon power does. We have eight shots. We're gonna level it off and just see where we're at there, so. Ah yes, another fine day in Elite Dirt World. Well, I'll throw a link in the description box below where you can buy both the Ember Strike if you're interested in a solid pump action revolver pseudo primary. And also, I'll link you to some darts worth using, probably on Amazon or something, because uh, that accuracy is downright shameful. But the, uh, the Ember Strike overall, like I said, I think that it's a good piece of design. I actually like it. Aesthetically, I think that it's relatively comfortable. It would get more comfortable the smaller you are. But it's hard to argue with a pump action anything. Pump action Springer, even if it is a revolver, is pretty clean, pretty crisp, pretty cool. If you want to pick one of these up, they're, like I said, I think they're about 32 bucks, which puts them in pseudo primary category. They're a little pricey compared to the other Dragon Power Blasters. I think the pistol's probably the best pickup, but uh, the Ember Strike is okay, particularly if it goes on sale. I think that this one's a winner. It, it gets like a the, the, the thumb, like 75% of the way up from the channel. But uh, thank you guys so much for watching. Let me know what you think of the Dragon Power line in general. This should conclude all of the reviews for the line, and I'm, uh, I'm glad that we ended on a high note because that bow was rough. Much love, blast on, Drac out. That was not my best joke. It <laughs> cannot all be jokes.